All right, so today's lesson is on chords and arcs. So previously we've talked about what an arc is. Uh, so we're gonna add a new term today called a chord. Uh, so a couple things, this, we're gonna start with vocabulary for today's lesson. Um, first, the, the new word is a chord, and what a chord is, it's a segment, a line segment, whose endpoints are actually on the circle. So this is an example of a chord. This would be called chord AB. Uh, so the end point is on the circle and the end point is on the circle. One chord that we know of so far, we just didn't call it a chord, is a diameter, where a diameter has two end points on the circle, but it's a special chord that happens to go through the center of the circle. So all of the other chords are just called regular, regular chords. Uh, we talked before about the arc, and the arc is going to be part of the outside circle, whatever it might be. So in this circle, we have arc AB going this way. This would be the minor arc. And then we have arc AB going that way, which would be the major arc of that. Uh, we also talked about central angle. And just to review, that's going to be an angle whose vertex is the center of the circle. So over here, this would be angle CMD or DMC. And in either case, this angle right here is the central angle. If we were to go this way, this angle right here would be considered the central angle. All right, so we talked about chord AB, we talked about arc AB, and we talked about central angle DMC. And so from these things here, we're gonna draw some conclusions that are gonna allow us to solve problems that we have using the information given. All right, so the first thing here, in example one, it says here that radius OX, right, which is over here, bisects angle AOB. So central angle AOB is bisected, and we know that bisect means cut in half, making two equal portions. So this central angle here is equal to this central angle right here. Okay. All right, so there's three things we can conclude from this, right? So the first thing is that congruent central angles are going to have congruent chords. So what that means is this, if this angle is congruent to this angle, then this chord is going to be congruent to that chord. So that is the one conclusion we can draw from, from these statements. The second thing is congruent chords have congruent arcs. So if this chord is congruent to this chord, then this arc is congruent to that arc. Essentially what it means is if you have, uh, you have like two pieces of, of crust, like the outer edge of the crust is the same if the, the dimensions of it is the same. It's kind of an analogy, it's not 100% accurate, but it kind of maybe paints a picture for you to help you understand it a little bit better. The last thing is that congruent arcs have congruent central angles. So if we come to this picture here, and we know that this arc is congruent to this arc, right? And we've talked about arc measures, the degree of arcs. Then we know that this angle has to be equal to this angle. So when you have a problem like this, there's three piece, uh, pieces of information that you'll need to be able to figure out some of the problems coming up. So make sure you copy these down and, and understand these. I try to contrast the, the color on there so it's a little bit easier to see. But essentially these symbols here are what these three things mean. So what I try to do is take these symbols and put it into words to make it a little bit more easy to understand, something that you can take away. All right, example two, if YM and ZN, okay, so YM is a chord, right? We just talked about that. Both endpoints are on the circle. And ZN is also on the chord. That's a chord as well, right? If they're congruent chords, what do we know? Well, we know if we have congruent chords, what do we also have? We have congruent arcs. So it means that this arc is going to be congruent to that arc. And whether it looks like it or not, it doesn't matter because they tell us that if this chord is congruent to this chord, then the arcs have to be congruent as well. And that's what this is saying here, that arc YM is congruent to arc ZM. Well, since we have two congruent arcs, we also are going to have uh, congruent angles. So here we have angle MLY, right? So angle MLY is going to be congruent to this angle over here. Right? And because that, that becomes the congruent arcs have congruent central angles. So although the central angle wasn't given to you, we can also conclude that in this particular problem. So there's three takeaways for that. And as we start to plug numbers in, you'll see how these things come into play. So again, know this really, really well, really well. All right, 
we have a, a new theorem in this section. Within a circle or in congruent circles, right, two things occur. Chords equidistant, equidistant means the same distance. Chords equidistant from the center are congruent. So if you have two chords the same distance from the center, then they are congruent. This says here if you have congruent chords, they are going to be equidistant from the center. So it kind of says the same thing, but in different orders, different directions of, of wording. All right, so here in this example, if BG, right, it is congruent to EG, right? So that's the distance from the center. So these are two chords, equidistant from the center are congruent. Then we know that CA, this chord, is going to be congruent to that chord. All right, so visually when we look at it, we see that this is the same distance as this, which makes this chord the same distance as that chord. And it doesn't matter what angle they're at. If the distance is the same, no matter where it's at, those two chords are gonna be congruent. This says here then, the backwards of it, the second part, if CA is congruent to DF, then we know that BG, this part here, has to be congruent to that part there. So that's what it's saying. It just depends what part of the problem you're given, but essentially that is going to be a, a pretty big takeaway for us as we work on problems in this particular unit. All right, another example here. So using those theorems, all right, if the distance from AB to the center is four, right? So here's AB, here's the center, so the distance is four, right? And the distance from QS, right, which is here, to the center is four, so we know that the distances are the same, then we know that the, the, uh, the chords are gonna be the same as well, right? Then by theorem 11-5, that's exactly what we're talking about, AB, the distance of this, is congruent to the distance of this. So the question is then, QS is equal to seven plus seven, which is 14, which also means that AB has to be 14 as well, all right? So that would be the answer for AB. All right, example four. Uh, they want you to find the value of x. They want you to find this value. Well, from here, we see that this is 22 and this is 22, so the whole chord is 44 units. This chord is 44 units, so again, by the theorem we just talked about, we know that if this is 18, this also has to be 18 as well. All right, and so that's what we're saying here. We prove these two chords are the same length, and then because of that definition, we know that the distance from the chord to the center has to be 18. All right, let's take a look at this problem here. All right, the new theorem here says in a circle, a diameter that is perpendicular. Again, what does perpendicular mean? It means a 90 degree angle, okay? So make sure if you don't know that, you write that down. A diameter that is perpendicular, perpendicular to a chord bisects the chord. What does bisect mean? It means split in two equal parts, okay? the chord and its arc. So say it again, in a circle, a diameter that's 90 degrees to a chord bisects the chord and its arcs. So here's a picture of what that's dis displaying. Sometimes words, it's a little bit difficult to understand. So we have here a chord, right? So we have a diameter, right? Here's our diameter that is perpendicular to a chord. So what it's saying is that this diameter and this chord here are at 90 degrees to each other, they're perpendicular. And so when it does that, it bisects the chord, right? So this part is congruent to this part and its arcs. So this arc is going to be congruent to that arc there. So that's what that's saying there. Okay, now as a result, angle BCD, right? So BCD here, that's the central angle, is going to be congruent to ACD. And again, that relates back to the previous where the chords and the arcs are gonna have, are gonna lead to congruent central angles. All right, so let's take a peek at the next theorem here. There's a lot of theorems in this unit. In a circle, the diameter that bisects a chord, right, so in a circle, if you have a chord, the diameter that bisects a chord, right, but in this case, a chord that's not the diameter, so what they mean is you can't have a, a chord going through the center bisecting by another chord. So it has to be an example like shown. Um, a diameter that bisects a chord is perpendicular to the chord. So if you bisect the chord, then we know that it's perpendicular. So this is the backwards of what that is saying, right? So saying essentially the same thing, it's just coming from a different direction. 
All right, in this example here, uh, in a circle, the perpendicular bisector of a chord contains the center of the circle. So if you perpendicularly bisect a chord, right, the perpendicular bisector is a line. And so if you actually bisect this chord perpendicularly, then we know that this line, which is the perpendicular bisector of this, has to go through the center of the circle. And so, and we'll see that come into play on some questions as well. Because this is gonna help you identify what parts they are, what kind of angles you might use for problems, um, and, and those uh, sorts of things. Right. Okay, here in this example, um, they want the length of the chord. So here, the length of this chord is four degrees, and it's, uh, it's perpendicular here. And so what do we know? We know that this is going to be congruent to this. So if we find this, we can also find that, which is going to be the answer for, for x. Well, how do we find this half segment here, this half portion, is we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. So to find this, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. In this example, 6.8 is the hypotenuse. This is the leg, and this is the other leg. And this is the leg we're trying to find. We're not going to call it x, even though we do. x is really the entire thing. But we're going to call this x just because we're used to seeing that. We could call it a, b, c, or any other letter you want. So when you go through the Pythagorean theorem, you're going to get a value of 5.5. So we know that this is 5.5, which makes this here also 5.5. So the entire chord length is, in fact, 11 units long, all right? All right, the distance from the midpoint to the chord to the midpoint of its minor arc. So what they're saying is this. You take uh, 6.8 units, right? So this here and this here, these are two radii, correct? So this is 6.8. This has to be 6.8. So if this is four, this section here has to be 2.8, and that's what we're saying here in this example. So you can find all sorts of different measures uh, using some of those definitions that we talked about previously. All right, last example here. If P and Q are points on the circle O, so by definition, that tells you right here, this is literally the definition of chord. If you go back, the definition of chord is a line, a segment whose two endpoints are on the circle. And that's exactly what that says. So this is a chord PQ. The next thing says uh, we have some dimensions here, but they give us the symbol. So now we know this is a chord and we're perpendicular. And so because it's coming from the center, these are going to be bisected. So this becomes eight. Okay. And so what they want is the radius of the circle. So we can draw a radius this way, or we could draw it that way. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to use this, this triangle here for our, our problem solving. So this in fact is not 16, this is eight. And then this is 15. So what we wanna find here is the radius, right? All right, so based on that, we would do some Pythagorean theorem going through here, and we're gonna find out that the radius is actually 17 inches long. So you see the types of questions we have, you really have to study these theorems and really understand them, not just by words, but what they mean, what they translate to, how you apply them and you're gonna find that this, this is gonna help you out quite a bit.